close your eyes and watch your breath. When the breath comes in, know it's coming in. Know what goes out, know that it's going out. As for any other thoughts that may come through the mind right now, you just let them go. We're here to train the mind so it doesn't follow just anything that strikes its fancy. You've got to be able to decide what's worth following and what's, no, what's not. If you don't have any control over your mind, the mind can turn against you and start thinking about things and you get obsessed with something that can really cause you a lot of trouble. So take this opportunity to learn how to ride herd on the mind and give it something good to stay with. The breath is something that you can make very comfortable. Think of it as not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, but the whole flow of energy in the body that allows the air to come in, allows the air to go out. And try to be sensitive to how that feels. You can try longer breathing, shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. When you give the mind something good to stay with, and the breath is something good to stay with, because after all, it is the force of life. Without the breath, you'd die. And if the breath is in good shape, then it's going to be good for the body and good for the mind. So it takes some time to learn about your breath, to be sensitive to what's going on inside you. That's why you've got something good to hold on to, so that when useless things come into the mind, you realize you don't need to go there. You're not hungry for whatever comes up. Because there is a sense of nourishment that comes as the mind has a chance to settle down and have its own space. This is a lot of what the practice is all about, is getting some control over the mind. We practice generosity, we practice virtue, we practice meditation, all for the sake of getting some control over our thoughts so they don't turn into our enemies. It's important to keep this in mind. We're going to have a lot of activities today at Rodman's ordination. And it's important that in the midst of all those activities that you remember that the quiet mind, the trained mind, is what this is all about. Ordination nowadays isn't like it was for the Buddha. When he left home, he left home alone. His parents weren't happy. As he said, he cut off his hair and beard as they were crying, went off into the forest. He didn't have any sure guarantee that there would be a path to the end of suffering, but he said if you know, he couldn't, didn't devote his life to that question, he'd feel that he'd wasted his life. So he went off, and six years later came back. He'd found the way to the end of suffering. He was able to teach that to his parents, to his wife, to his, all of his relatives, and they realized it was really worthwhile. And this is why his teachings have spread, as the people have benefited from them, and why it's become now ordination is not just a solitary event, it's a community event. The whole community is here to support the person who wants to really practice. And so we can report, <clears throat> we can give that support in external ways, but the internal way is probably the best. Each of us trains his or her own mind. And that provides an energy that helps us realize that this really is a worthwhile path, because we all see the benefits. So make sure you try to maintain this center as you go through the day, the center inside, where you have a sense of the breath coming in and going out, and it feels comfortable. And see how that changes the balance of power in the mind, so you're not running out all the time, that you have a sense of being well-established here inside. You're coming from a position of strength inside when you have this spot. When you're coming from a position of strength, you're much more likely to do things that are harmless. And the harm that we do to one another is when we feel threatened, we feel endangered, and so we lash out in, in retaliation or in anticipation. But when there's a sense, okay, that you've got your spot here and it's safe and it's comfortable, why would you want to harm anyone else? And this, this way that peace spreads out into the community, because it starts in the heart. When your heart is well trained, when your mind is well trained, okay, then the benefits spread out to other people too. So as you go through the day, try to maintain this center and see the benefits that come. 